Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's suppose that we have a composition of two functions, f of g of x, which we can think of as f of g of x this way. Okay, so we have, we have um, the output of g heading into f. Let's consider what um, the derivative of this composition is. But let's think about it in the rule sense, as we go from run to rise for this rule. Now up close, F and G are like straight lines. And if we go up close enough, the output of G will be small enough so that, so that um, it if that doesn't change the, um, the input of F too much so that we're still looking at a straight line. So if we go small enough in, we're gonna be pretty good. Okay, so we can think about and pretend that both of them are straight lines. So we start with an initial run and we're gonna input that run in, um, into G and what's going to be the rise that comes from G. So we can compute that and how do we compute that? We compute it by taking the derivative as a number, which is a slope of a tangent line right at x, g prime of x. And we multiply it to the run. This gives us the rise of g, the approximate rise of g. So let's take this now, this rise of g, and that actually is, is equal to the run of what's going into f right now because we're putting that into F. So this is the run that we're, that we're going to put into F. So how do you compute the rise then from this run that's going into F? Well, you simply multiply it by the slope of F. That's the rule for how to go from, from run to rise. You multiply it by the slope. So F prime of, ooh, well, F, well the derivative of F at a particular input value of F. Now, what are we inputting into F? we are inputting the point g of x. So this whole block bit right here will be the ultimate rise of f. Well, the rise of f of g even, but the rise of the output of f. So ultimately the rise of f of g, given a run. So this right here is a nice description of the derivative of a composition. Simply, you see this little circle here? We're just multiplying. We multiply the slopes. We multiply this derivative by this one if we see composition. Now, we have to be careful because what do we plug in? to the function, we don't plug in x here because x isn't going into f. What is going into f? g of x. So you plug in what's going into each function into the respective derivative and multiply. In that way, this composition symbol turns into multiplication when we go to derivatives. Let's take one more look at this. So thinking about this, let's use some symbols. Perhaps we have a ratio that goes from a run to a rise of G, which will say a rise of G, we'll use this symbol here for, for a rise of, of the function G. And this right here will be a constant slope, meaning G prime of X. Now, if you give us, if, if we take a, a, ra, a run here, that's gonna give us a specific rise so that we have our ratio preserved. Now let's take that specific rise and let's put that rise into F as a run. Now what's the written now? Let's consider the ratio of the derivative of F where this guy is our run. So we're gonna output a particular rise. So this would be like the rise. Then thinking about these symbols that way, these symbols are numbers based upon a non-zero um, run that we started with. Now, given that idea, these two numbers will cancel. 
And then we'll be left with df over dx. So a ratio from run to rise. Now, what if dg itself were zero? So that means there'll be no run. I mean, there'll be no rise of g at all. Well, if there's no rise of g at all, then there's no run coming into f, which means we're going to be stabilized anyway. So we'll end up just getting zero in the end. But still, nonetheless, we still have the idea that this thing right here, this ratio, which actually is the derivative of f with g of x plugged in, times this guy, which is zero, is still ultimately zero as desired. So this multiplication always holds. Even if you think about these symbols and cancellation, cancellation can occur in the case of, case of this being zero. However, if it is zero, we have another reason why this whole thing, why, while this is still the ultimate derivative of the composition. So the derivative of the composition. And we'll look at some examples of this and how to work with it. Thanks for watching.